In high school you may have encountered a factorial, for example when doing some combinatorics. This notation however occurs more often, for example in sequences and series. So in this video we will briefly recap what this factorial is and we will derive some useful formulas involving the factorials that we need later on. So AC factorial and factorial for natural numbers and factorial how to compute it, you have n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 times n minus 3 and so on until you are at 3 times 2 times 1. So that's for natural numbers and for convenience we also define this for 0 to be 0 factorial to be 1. So that is the definition. Let us do some uh, examples. So 5 factorial, how do we compute this? That is 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Uh, 5 times 4 equals 20 times 3 equals 60 times 2 equals 120 times 1 remains 120. So 5 factorial equals 120. And you'll see those numbers grow very fast, like 6 factorial would be a 720 and 7 factorial would be a big number already. Then let's do some more examples. Like if you have n plus 1 factorial, what's that? So n plus 1 times n times n minus 1 and so on times 2 times 1. However, this still reads n times n minus 1 times n times minus 2. So this still reads n factorial. So n plus 1 factorial equals n plus 1 times n factorial. And we can use this to simplify these quotients, which occur often if you're doing ratio tests in uh, sequences and series. So what do we get then? Uh, we rewrite n plus 1 factorial as n plus 1 times n factorial. The n factorials cancel out and you get a 1 over n plus 1. So those are some formulas involving the factorial. Now I'll do some combinatorics as our final example. So for example we have this example over here uh, where we have 5 chairs, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And we have 5 uh, ideal children, say Anna, Bart, Chris, Donald and Emma. And ideal in the sense that they all are going to sit on one chair, or one chair, not all five at the same chair. Uh, and they don't, do not have a preferred chair, and they also don't mind sitting to whoever they are next to. So uh, ideal children in a way. And how many ways can you distribute the children over the chairs? Now let's take a look first at Anna. She has five choices. So suppose she takes uh, two. Then for Bart there are four choice, choice, choices left, say he takes four. So how many choices could we have formed in general? Uh, in general? Now we have two four, that we could have had two one, two three and two five as well. Or Anna could have chosen the first one. So Anna had five uh, choices and then for Bart there were four left. So the total number of configurations would be five times four. Now you see how this co continues. Uh, Chris has only three choices left, so the total number of configurations which we could have obtained would be 5 times 4 times 3. And then for Donald there are two, suppose he takes this one, and then Emma only can take number 3. So the total number of choices, the total number of configurations we could have had would be 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. So the total number of options would be 5 factorial. And that is why you see those factorials often pop up when you're doing combinatorics.